So I want to start off by giving you a couple of tools on how to uh, create a bridge in your bridge designer. So let's get there first by going to the start menu, bridge designer, yours probably says 2016 or a newer version. You can click on the one that's not for older computers, so just the one that says bridge designer 2016. I'm going to create a new bridge. If you already have a bridge, you can load an existing, and that basically functions like an open button. So let's create a new one. We're going to make sure that we're going through each one of these steps, making a bridge just like Mr. Cal's beak specified. Uh, I'm going to select one of my templates. Remember, we're just doing through trusses. We don't have to do a deck truss. Um, so we're just doing through trusses. You can also not use a template, and it will leave you with a blank slate. But just for, uh, for showing you, I'm going to use the Howie through truss. I can put my name here, and then I'm going to click Finish. And now I have a template here with joints and members that are kind of grayed out. And what I'm going to do, all I have to do is fill in the blanks. So I have some tools over here. I have my joints tool, my members tool, my selection tool, and then a tool to erase. So each one of those are pretty self-explanatory. Right now, I'm just filling in the joints. I actually have to do the joints first, and then I connect the members. And you'll notice that I don't have to do the roadway uh, it's already pre-filled in there because it assumes that you're going to have a roadway. So one way that I can fill these in is just by clicking the member tool and then clicking on my first and dragging it all the way to the last. And as long as my joints are lined up, it should work pretty easily. And so have, once I have each one of those filled in, uh, you'll notice that uh, as we create them, it creates over here on the right side, it creates details for each one of these members. And as I select them, over on the right side, you'll notice that they are selected on the left side, and vice versa. If I select on the left side, it also highlights the members on the right side over here. And so um, you'll notice that, um, well, we'll explain that in just a second. So for each one of these members, like for this specific member, uh, it's made of carbon steel. It's solid all the way through, and it is 140 by 140. So that is the size of my each this size of this member here. Um, so I can actually change that, and I'm going to change it in just a minute after I test my bridge. So let's test it just to see what this bridge does. And we'll notice that once my animation comes through here, um, that this member right here has already failed. Um, and you notice that whenever this test animation comes into play, you'll notice two different colors: your red uh, for members that are in compression, and then your blue for members that are in tension. So let's go back to the drawing board. And you'll notice here that I have my joints that are red are the ones that failed because of compression. So uh, I'm going to actually select each one of those, and I can do that by uh, pressing and holding the control key to select multiple of them. And I'm going to select each one that failed. And I'm actually going to change these components and make them larger, because larger would increase the strength. So let's make them maybe two sizes larger, so 160 by 160, and let's test our bridge again. You'll notice already that I have a status of a passing bridge, and our truck should pass safely through. And as we do lots more tests, um, it's actually going to be more helpful for you, for you to turn off the animation, and you can just do that by going to test and uncheck the show animation. So now when I test my bridge, it will just pop up with whether it passed or failed. Um, so you have compression and we have tension over here. Um, you'll notice that now that my bridge has passed, which is great, that's a requirement, uh, it's also over budget. So I want it to be under $230,000, which um, I need to cut close to $60,000 or $70,000 in order to meet that budget. And a way that I can do that is either by decreasing the size of each one of these members by changing um, the whether it's solid or hollow, and I can also change the material. So I'm going to start by just changing them to a hollow tube. So now, rather than being filled in, they're hollow, but um, it failed. So I have quite a few members that actually failed, and I kind of expected that that would happen. So uh, I'm going to actually select all my members that failed. So I'm going to press and hold the control key, and I can actually deselect these members here um, that didn't fail, because they're doing just fine. 
and every other one, so all the ones that are selected in blue, I'm actually going to make those larger. So let's make them three sizes, sizes larger, test it again, and now we have less that failed, so let's deselect the ones that are okay now. That one's good. This one's good. Okay, and then let's make the ones that still failed, let's make them larger again. And you'll notice that each time I make it larger or smaller, my budget changes. That's just because of the amount of material that you're using. And each time I test it, uh, I am uh, creating new iterations or versions of my bridge. So if I want to go back to a previous version, all I have to do is go back to a newer version or an older version of my bridge. So I'm going to keep it where I am. And what you're going to learn is that you're going to go back and forth between testing your bridge, uh, selecting multiple members, and changing the sizes of these members. And it's going to be a matter of uh, increasing or decreasing the size, uh, changing the uh, solid or hollow, and changing different things to try and get, get it so that it passes and meets my budget. And so that's going to be kind of up to you uh, to do. The last thing I want to show you is how to uh, actually sort my members by tension and compression. You can do that by clicking on the columns here, and it will sort, in this case, uh, from lowest to highest compression. And so my members here that were all failing by compression, so those are here. Uh, I can make them a little bit larger, test it again, and you'll notice that now they're fine. Uh, and so now I can change the ones that failed because of tension and make them larger, test it, and now I have a bridge that passes and it meets my budget. Um, however, it may or may not be my bridge design. Uh, just remember that you can change this so that we don't have a template there and so that you're using your actual bridge template that you created um, on graph paper. Um, so what you can do is just test different shapes that work. So notice where different weaknesses are um, in your bridge. So if we go back to the first version of my bridge and test it, uh, notice that um, where my members failed and what they're in. So these members right here are in compression. Um, and the members down here are in tension. So as you play around with this program and as you look at different um, uh, iterations or different views or versions of your puzzle um, or of your bridge, I want you to look at the parts that you're increasing the size. So like in this case right here, I had to increase these to be really strong as well as these right here. So these are going to be the parts of your bridge that need to be the strongest. So as you're creating your bridge, make sure that these are the strongest components of your bridge. All right. Um, so if you need to change the design, remember you can, you can always improvise and add your own version uh, or add your own design here uh, and make sure that you are uh, meeting the requirements that Mr. Kalsbeek has given you. Uh, well, that's it. And Make sure you play around a little bit before you ask questions and have fun.